Psalms 111. Father in heaven, I thank you for your love and mercy. I thank you that you've given Jesus Christ, our Lord, as a sacrifice, a risen Savior, a high priest and soon coming King. Thank you, Father, for all that you are and what you're doing in our lives, for the privilege we have to serve and represent you. Help us, Lord, in your grace and mercy and your counsel that we serve you with honor and joy and success in the kingdom of God for thy name's sake. Would you guide my words as you would desire that we hear truth and are moved by your spirit with confidence and joy, rejoicing in the power and the love that you've given us. Bring deliverance, O God, in our hearts and lives in every way that we need, that we trust you and find deliverance uh, with peace and with joy and to serve you faithfully. Thank you, Lord, for each one and blessings we pray and your name honored in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. This happens to be Living Hope Assembly, this congregation. We are to praise the Lord. I had Brother Garrett to put that verse up here. Anybody notice it? When you come in this morning, Psalms 100 verse 4. Amen. That's what we need to do when we come in here. I don't necessarily mean once you open the door and walk in, you're just praising the Lord till song service starts. Offer praise. Offer thanksgiving. Praise from the abundance of your heart because we're going to read some things here that gives us real good reason to. He said, In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. Anybody enjoy the works that God's doing? Absolutely, absolutely, every last one of them. Whatever God is doing, we take pleasure in them. A lot of it we don't understand. A lot of it we don't see. A lot of it, a lot of it's still to be performed. But we take pleasure in what He's doing. Now, we don't take pleasure in what the devil's doing. We don't take pleasure in the corruptness. But we give thanks to God because in spite of all that, God is working. God is performing. He's begun a good work in us. And look what he's doing in us. Is it good? Absolutely. We have a reason to praise the Lord here and everywhere else. Hallelujah. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of them, uh, all of them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious. Hallelujah. Those of you that have ever been in charge over a job, has every job been honorable and glorious? No. I heard a no from Sister Faith. And I heard a, a no from Brother Mitch. The rest of y'all must not be bosses of any kind. <laughs> but every one of us are in some manner. How many parents told your kids, go clean your room? Was it glorious? Was it honorable? Not every time. Guess what? The Lord's works are glorious and honorable all the time. They're blessed with His presence. They're blessed with His love. They're blessed with His honor. They're blessed with His truth, blessed with His joy, blessed with His counsel. It says His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness endures forever. It will never change. It'll never stop. It'll not do anything other than continue as His righteousness that we can depend on, have confidence in. What's the first few verses or words in this chapter? Praise ye the Lord. That's why I have a reason. That's why I'm motivated. That's why I want to live for Him. That's why I'm looking forward to what's coming next in my life because of Him. I want to praise Him and honor Him because his, what He does is honorable. It's glorious, it's trustworthy, it's glorious and honorable, and His righteousness endures forever. He hath made His wonderful works to be remembered. 
the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Now I'm going to skip down to uh, last word of verse 5. It says covenant. Part of that I want to join in with this verse I'm talking about right now. His works are to be remembered. When we made a covenant with Jesus Christ in your past, whenever that was, it was an agreement. We may call it a contract, but it's way much more than a contract. But basically speaking, it's an agreement. God provides certain things with certain guidelines, and we agree to it to follow with certain agreement and guidelines, faithfulness. Amen. Brother Mitch, when I stood before the preacher with my to-be wife, I heard the words, love and cherish. I heard sickness or health. I heard richer or poor. I heard better or worse. Within that covenant, we were to understand to keep on keeping on the best we knew how. God is providing you and I a covenant proven by the death and resurrection of His own Son, how much He loved us. We have more than enough reason to praise Him all the time and more than just once a little bit at services. When we come together as a congregation, assembly, obviously, for sure we praise and honor and glorify God Almighty for He's worthy. He's confident. He is sure. His blessings are wonderful. His works are marvelous. Everything He does is absolutely a blessing. Granted, a lot of it is uncomfortable. The truth hurts sometimes. Sometimes it's difficult to bend over backwards and bend over frontwards when you're trying to do everything else. <sighs> but within all that that's going on, God is still honorable. He's glorious. He's blessed and favorable to us. His eye is on us. His heart is for us. He's proven himself again and again and again. There's no reason. Oh, we have plenty of excuses. There's no reason for us to ever complain. I've just barely got started in this chapter, and I'm going to try to hasten on because of the obvious reason we're all waiting on. Uh, he is righteous and endured forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. When was the last time you realized his graciousness and his compassion? I have today. I have today. <laughs> Wasn't it so precious? And I can't remember the, the child's name. Sister Tiffany reported, heard this person pray the prayer. Wasn't that precious? God graced me with that blessing as he did with you. Amen. Remember the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. His works are to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat or provision unto them that fear him. Talked about this a little bit in class this morning. That doesn't mean that you're afraid of him like some enemy. Oh, no, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. doesn't mean that. doesn't mean that. It's the kind of feeling when the most high authority walks in the room. You straighten up, you sit up, you behave. What does a private do when the, 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 the sergeant walks in, Brother Mitch? Stands up. Acknowledges him because of the authority. And not say a word unless he's spoken to. Not trying to be ugly. What I'm trying to portray is the reverential fear that we have to His majesty. That when His presence is ministering, we don't goof off. We don't run back and forth. Amen. Amen. Well, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not interested anyway. Guess what your goofing off causes? And then they miss something. He hath given me meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. 
forever means forever mindful of what he's promised. Rich or poor or better or worse, sickness and health, love and cherish. And I just read that list because we're familiar of that type of thing. Whatever God has promised in the covenant that he's made to us. You know what kind of gifts he's given us? He's given his son, Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of all. Amen. He's given the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to edify, to perfect, to promote the gospel. He's given those uh, giftings to the church. He's given spiritual gifts in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians and others that the Bible talks about. He's given these things to edify and encourage, to uplift with his counsel and power to know, to serve, and to succeed in the kingdom of God. He's given us those things. There's a reason to praise the Lord. He said, praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Hallelujah. We have no reason to ever not praise the Lord. We offer plenty of excuses, this and that, and we think we're validated. All right, we'll carry on. He hath given me, and I already read that, he hath showed his people the power of his works that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. Heritage of the heathen. What? You do... (coughs) We don't realize how and what God's got prepared for us and how he's doing that, how he's promoting it, how he's going to give it to us. Amen. We don't have a lot of time to get into that, but God has a preparation for us. He has a heritage or an inheritance that he's providing. The works of his hands are verity or truth and judgment. All his commandments are sure. Every one of his commandments, he means what he says. The list there in Galatians, I think it's chapter 3, talking about the lust of the flesh, sin. And there's eight or ten of them there. I don't remember. haven't really counted them, but there's several there. He means what he says. They're wrong. And if you don't stop doing that, it will send you to hell because that's the choice you want to live. At the end of Revelation, or nearly the end of it, he says there are certain ones that's going to be cast into the lake of fire. One of them is, and all liars. Another place it says drunkards aren't going to make it into the kingdom of God. He says what he means. His commandments are sure. His proclamations are real. The word of God is real. His plan is real. It's not going to change. When Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again, that settled it right then. You know about uh, last will and testament? You ever hear that before? When that person dies, what's written is put into play. When Jesus died, what was written was put into play. What God says, he means. When he says he loves you, he does. What he says he gives you, he does. Amen. And so forth and so on. Uh, the works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. My, what a plan. What a plan. Amen. Here a few months ago, Our society ran low on toilet paper. And folks scrambled to find some. Oh, no, we're out of toilet paper. What are we going to do? It was almost like it was life-threatening. There's ways around it, but it's not pleasant. Anybody remember cloth diapers? Didn't I tell you there's a way around it? (laughs) Since that attack of the pandemic on that particular issue, toilet paper has been a little more accessible. How many buys two packages instead of one now? All I'm trying to say is be prepared, clean out your cage. And I say that with respect. Know ahead of time. Do the best you can. He sent redemption. This plan of redemption was in place way before man was created. 
God knew and he planned and looked forward to. Look how he's providing for you and I. We have reason to praise him. We have reason to praise him here. We have reason to praise him everywhere. And I'm not talking about praise the Lord. Well, glory. Bless me, my four, no more. Amen. I'm not talking about that. That's better than nothing. But I'm talking about from your heart. Praise the Lord for his provision, for his love, for life abundant and eternal. Glory be to God for his provision in my life, for my family, for my church family, for the word of God. And the list can go on and on and on. Praise him. Praise him. You know that concept's not going to ever stop. Amen. I'm looking forward to the time that it's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Amen. <laughs> he sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. I think people who say the man upstairs don't mean any disrespect. I think that's the case. But I think also some just don't want to care, don't care to say God or Lord, or Jesus, and it's a little less confrontational just to say the man upstairs. His name is reverend, revered, awesome. This person, this deity, Brother Mitch, he's the one who's provided. He's the one who's provided. By the way, if you notice that pretty little red thing out there behind the church, it was donated. It's called a zero-turn lawnmower. Hallelujah. Amen. God provides in ways that we don't know all the time. Amen. I can go into a lot of things, but I won't. Praise the Lord. The pastor's not going to go into a lot of things. Holy and reverend is his name. Last verse. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Do I have to be so blunt, Lord? Okay, I'll say it that way. You want to know why you're so mentally numb? You don't have a reverential fear of the Almighty. That's the way your life is. Never done that before. The scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. People who learn to talk less, listen twice as much, have an opportunity and a chance to receive some wisdom and giving yourself opportunity to revere the awesome one to hear counsel of truth. We have all kinds of reasons to praise the Lord all the time. Anytime, all the time. Anytime, all the time. Wasn't it interesting to hear the half praise report, half prayer request this morning? Amen. God's working. Things are happening. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures Forever. Didn't I tell you the praise of the Lord will go on and on and on? It will. And the reason there's a reason why. All of the redeemed will have a particular reason why. A special, unique reason why. Been brought forth from the dead, Brother Mitch. All the others been there all along anyway. They've been praising the Lord and will forever and ever. But we that are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment and twinkling of an eye, and we'll be all caught up with the Lord in the heavens and the air with Him. We'll all be with Him forever and ever and ever. There's going to be a lot of things to carry on and go on for a long time, but praise God, we have a reason to praise the Lord. We have a reason to praise the Lord. A lot of junk going on in life. A lot of junk. And I tell you what, it's just multiplying big time. Multiplying big time. Compound interest is a concept that a lot of folks understand. Compound sinning is going on. I mean, it gets worse, then it jumps bigger, and then it jumps bigger than that. It is. It's getting that worse. It's compounding. Hold fast. Remember the verse Brother uh, Scott used Wednesday night? 
Hold fast. Now, in other words, hang on. What you know, what you believe, have confidence in. The Lord will bring you through. Amen. Anyone need prayer this morning? Have a particular need you'd like the church to pray with you about? 